ለመማር ወደ ትምርት ተቋም መሄድ ግድ አይደለም ናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ ራሳችሁን ከኮሮና ቫይረስ ወረርሽኝ የተጠበቃችሁ በቤታችሁ ወይም በተመቻችሁ ቦታ በኢንተርኔት አማካኝነት በኦንላይን ትምርታችሁ መከታተል ትችላላችሁ ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ ኢንስቲትዩት ኦፍ ኮመርሻል ማኔጅመንት አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር የሚሰጡ ትምርቶችን ተከታተላችሁ በስድስት ወር ጊዜ በአለም አቀፍ ደረጃ ተቀባይነት ያለውን የስልጣና ማስረጃ ባለቤት መሆን ይቻላል ልምድ ባላችሁ መምራን እየተማራችሁ ጥያቄና መልስ የክፍል ስራዎች ፈተና መፈተን ክፍል ውስጥ እንዳላችሁት አይነት በኦንላይን ባላችሁበት ቦታ ከናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እህት ኩባንያ ታስተውሱት ቻፕተር 3 ማለት ነው ቻፕተር 2 ላይ ዌት ኤንድ ባላንስ ቲዮሪ አይተናል ቲዮሪ በ ዌት ኤንድ ባላንስ ጀርባ ያለ ቲዮሪ ማለት ነው we have explained about the theory of imbalance and it tells you the salutation by master men weight and balance and it's the around the mid center of balance or the center of gravity and its magnet in the middle aitenalwal no then zinyao chapter 3 nya chapter lai ka aircraft weight and balance ga and it's na ya izwal then milol no min saraw ma no for kezi ka 3 nya chapter bahal yalu hulum chapter uch ስለ ኤርክራፍት ዌት ኤንድ ባላንስ ካልኩሌሽን ነው የሚያተኩሩት ማለት ነው እንዴት እንደሚሰራ እና እሱ ነው የሚያተኩሩት እዚህ ቻፕተር ላይ requirements normally ህግ አስገድደው ሁሉ ጊዜ በየጊዜው ያው ዲዮ ተሰነ ዲስከስ እንዳደረግነው ሁሉ ጊዜ ዌት ኤንድ ባላንስ እንዲሰራ ይገደድም አንድ ኤርክራፍት ማው አምራቹ ወይም ደግሞ ማንፋክቸሩ በሰጠው ዳታ መሰረት የአንድ ኤርክራፍት ዌት ኤንድ ባላንስ ይታወቃል አንለስ ኤንድ አዘርዋይስ ምን ሲሆን ማለት ነው በዌቱ ወይም ደግሞ በአጠቃላይ ኤርክራፍት ዌት ኤንድ ባላንስ ሺፍት የሚያደርግ ሜንቴናንስ ወይም ደግሞ ሪፔር ወይም ደግሞ የኢኪፕመንት ቼንጅ ካልተደረገ በስተቀር በየጊዜ ዌት ኤንድ ባላንስ አይሰራም በመሰረቱ ማለት ነው there is data which is given by the manufacturer or by the certification provider certificate bemisetaw akal yetezegaje document alle manu based on that document no misaraji hulle weight and balance aisera malen no e haytenal malen no so such aircraft are usually weighed when originally certified or after major alterations are affected ስለዚህ አፌክት የሚሆነው ያው ሜጀር የሆነ ቼንጅ አው ኤርክራፍቱ ላይ ከተከናወነ ነው የሚል አይተ ነበር ፎርስ የኤርክራፍት ዌት ኤንድ ባላንስ መስራት አስፈላጊነት አንዱ ነው ዋናው ደግሞ ምንድነው ሴፍቲ ነው ኦፍ ኮርስ አቪዬሽን ላይ ቅድሚያ ከመሰጣቸው ነገሮች አንዱ ምንድነው የሴፍቲ ጉዳይ ነው ማለት ነው ይሄ ማንም ሶ ሚያቀው ነው ነው ሶ ፎር ዘ ፐርፐዝ ኦፍ ሴፍቲ aircraft weight and balance seriously ይታያል ማለት ነው ዋና አላማ so ሄኛው እነዚህ እነዚህ አይተን ነበር for the major source of weight and balance change ሊሆን የሚችለው ምን ሲሆን ነው ለናል repair and alteration alteration ስንል ምንድነው ጊዜ የሚፈጥራቸው የተለያዩ equipmentዎች አሉ ሁሻር uh smart or low in uh, very light in uh, weight but they have many of the equipments integrated within it yetelayu system ochna yetelayu function miyarbu yetelayu equipment och awun mamret techilwal malet indemitaku technology yerekekke behedekutur buzu negeroch bekelalu function miyaregulun equipment och system och na yetelayu entinoch mamret selal yetechale selona የክብደቱ በዛልክ የቀነሱ ነገሮች ኢኪፕመንቶች ማግኔት ይችላል ማለት ነው ከድሮ አውሮፕላኖች ለየት በመዋለ መልኩ ሶ ይድሮ ቀደምት ምርቶች not only አውሮፕላኖች ሌሎች መገልገያ አቃዎች መኪኖች and so on ሌሎችም ቴሌቪዥን ቴሌቪዥን እና የመሳሰሉ ራሱን እንደምትታዘውት በክብደታቸው እና በሚዙት ኤሪያ ያነሱ ነገር ግን ያው ፈንክሽናቸው የድሮ ቃዎች በቀላሉ ፈንክሽን የሚያደርግ ኢቭን ተጨማሪ ፈንክሽን የሚያደርግ ማምረት ይችላል ሶ በዚህ ምክንያት የተለያየ አልተሬሽኖች ወይም ደግሞ የ 
ኢኪፕመንት ቼንጆች በሚደረግ በሰዓት የኤርክራፍቱ ዌይት ዌይት ኤንድ ባላንስ ሊቀየርብን ይችላል ማለት ነው። ድሪንግ ዚስ ታይም ዊ ሃቭ ቱ ሜክ ዋት ሪከር ኦፍ ዚስ አልተሬሽን ኤንድ ሜክ አናዘር ዌይት ኤንድ ባላንስ ሪከር ማያዛለብን ማለት ነው። ይኖርብናል ማለት ነው። ሶ ማይ ዋናዎቹ የዌይት ኤንድ ባላንስ ቼንጅ እነዚህ ሁለቱም ነገሮች ሲሆኑ አዘርዋይስ ግን ያው አንድ ኤርክራፍት ዌይት ኤንድ ባላንሱ ተሰርቶ ሬዲ ሆኖ ነው ሚ ወደ ኦፕሬተር ወይ ደግሞ አውሮፕላኑ ኦፕሬት ወደ የሚያረጋው አካል ሚደርሰው ማለት ነው። እነዚህ እነዚህ አይተ ነበር ላስት ታይም ሶ ቱዴይ አወር ቱዴይስ ቶፒክ ኢዝ አባውት ኢኪፕመንት ፎር ዌይንግ ዌይንግ ወይም ደግሞ ዌይት ኤንድ ባላንስ ለመስራት የሚያስፈልጉን ኢኪፕመንት እምናይ ማለት ነው። Weighing aircraft with accurately calibrated scales is the only source sure method of obtaining an accurate MPT weight and CG location. So the main purpose of weight and balance when we set up as normally it is about obtaining the MPT weight of the aircraft and the location of the center of gravity of the aircraft. So the, there are equipments which help us to perform this weight and balance activity accurately malena and this equipment are accurately calibrated scales as you can see in this picture so based on the type of aircraft there are different type of weight and balance performing equipment or supporting equipment the two basic types of scales used to weigh an aircraft are platform and electronic uh, load scale yemibalu hulet ayinet scale salu on the airfield or in the runway you know in the airport otherwise so let the equipment which allo acho nezi ground support technicians and uh, of course technically we call them flight dispatchers nezi sira nezi qawoch inoru acho al based on the type of aircraft of course there are two basic types of uh scales which are used to perform the weight and balance activity so platform scales as you can see in this figure or ramp wheels also we call them uh, they usually usually a form of modified version of a platform scale this ramp wheel menelo huletenya figure man yenya platform huletenya figure lai this one ramp wheel so this is of course modified type of uh, this platform are low pro- low profile easy to handle and safe and also reliable the data or the information they give us is very reliable and the equipments are easy to handle as you can see they are easy to handle so this platform as you can understand from the name also this is a platform or a flat something plate so the aircraft main wheels or landing gears will be here and data will be delivered through the cable and you can read it from this equipment so how this is performed you tow or push the aircraft wheels or skids onto the scale part as a ground level first the aircraft the level the place where the aircraft's uh, weight and balance will be performed should be level and straight you must check that one then you push or you tow the aircraft and put it on this scale so with one scale per wheel so the first scale uh, one scale will be on the on one of the wheels and the other on the step by step you will perform on the all the landing gears or the, the aircraft wheels so with one scale per wheel each device should be capable of measuring up to 60000 pounds of since the weight on each wheel rarely exceeds this figure so yanda anda cho wheel lay kezi exceed li arek selemichel skezi 60000 pound yemihel measure yaregilnal andu lay malal then we record we record and 
we perform our weight and balance procedure based on the procedure given. So electronic load cell scales the other type of uh, equipment is this type of equipment and it's called electron load cell. So they are also reliable means of weight uh, weighing aircraft and are typically cheaper than the platform type in terms of cost. This one are cheaper. Using load cell scales allows for the aircraft to be set up and weighed in its level of flight altitude. With this method, the aircraft is placed on jacks. Unlike the previous one or the previous type of aircraft weighing equipment, in this type of equipment, the aircraft will be placed on jack, as you can see. This is jack or hydraulic jack or creek. So creek So the aircraft should be on jack when we are using this type of uh, this type of uh, weight and balance calculation. So the aircraft should be on this jack. So using the load sail scales allows for the aircraft to be set up and weighed in its level flight altitude. Attitude. So the aircraft should be in its level flight and the based on the procedure, the weight and balance will be performed. Uh, when the aircraft on the jack. With this method, the aircraft is placed on jack with the electronic cells placed between the jack and the jack pad on the aircraft. So the electronic pad will be here or at the jack point of the aircraft and data will be transferred similar to the one. So we will read on a display regarding the weight and balance. So as you can see in this picture, this helicopter is on the jack and there is an equipment which is known as electron load cell scale. A load cell is placed at the jack point. So the point where the jack will be spotted is the jack point of the aircraft and through this cable, we will read the data from this. So data which is available for our weight and balance calculation will be read from this uh, display. So this is the electronic type of weight and balance uh, equipment. The aircraft is raised on the jack until the wheels or skids of the floor. Of course, when we put the aircraft on jack, there are procedures normally. So the aircraft wheels or the landing gear should be clear from the ground normally or on the air. Only the jacks should hold the aircraft on its position. So the weight measured by each load cell is indicated on the control panel of the equipment. The jacking an aircraft off the ground from all load points can be an inconvenience as well as a safety risk, which some operators would rather avoid by opting for more expensive but simpler to use platform equipment. So in terms of safety, uh, the platform type of equipment is preferred because jacking an aircraft by itself has its own risk uh, related to safety. Now will draw the equation. What is the difference between load cell and electronic load cell? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we have discussed about this. Uh, I appreciate this type of communication, by the way, during uh, our uh, class. So Natana El will ask her the equation, the difference between the two type of equipment is which are used for measuring or for performing weight and balance. So these are the two types of weight and balance. For example, this electronic load cell, we have said there is a jack point or the aircraft should be on the jack when we use this type of electron or this type of equipment for our weight and balance. Whereas on this platform, 
the aircraft will wheels or the landing gear will be uh, here on this platform or on this plate. So the wheel will be here when we use this type of uh, scale or equipment for weight balance. Whereas when we use this uh, electronic load cell, the aircraft should be clear off from the ground by using the jacks or hydraulic jacks. So the main difference is this one, but they are of course similar and the cable will be where? Or the data cable that means will be on the jack point of the aircraft. So that the data will be delivered to the display model based on this. Clear now? Clear now? Not now, it's time to solve it. I'm going to go to the electronic load cell. I'm going to go to the load cell. Load cell and electronic cell. Where are load cells? Electronic load cell. No, I can okay. Platform and electronic non explainer. Load cell normally is uh, another expression for the electronic. But you load cell, electronic load cell. Load cell is this letter that came on. So, load cell, electronic load cell, the same. It's a matter of uh, expression. Sorry, it's a key and you're selling a salino. So, Tamil is all alone. Are it? The expression good I know is they are the same. But uh, my, I thought your question was between the two type of uh, equipment. Okay. So, jacking an aircraft off the ground, it should be clear off from the ground. Well, you know? So, it has some uh, aspect or related, some aspect related to safety. So, in terms of safety, this will be preferred. In addition, weighing with platform scales typically takes only one third of the time. So in terms of uh, time economy also, uh, this platform scale is more efficient than the electronic load cell type of equipment. So this one is also in terms of time, it's one third of time one third of the time which will be taken by this one will be consumed by this so in terms of time economy this is more faster than the electronic layer cell one or it's preferred all skills for aviation use manual or whatever they must be used or they must be protected with or shipped with safety of course you are already aviation personnel who are joining aviation. So any equipment which is related to aviation, of course, not only aviation, but we are talking about aviation. So any document or manual or electronic equipment must be protected when stored or should and they must be checked periodically. So this equipment is uh, in order to work properly or in order to be used for a longer time, they should be stored according to procedures and to uh, rules. So, man, you know, I have a vision gait, but as well, you know, but it's a marriage of periodic on a checkup manual, no, we demo, yeah, operation manual, but me as a mark, my serret, periodic. Periodic only check up my regimas for lagging no more. The same to that, the Nazi only a natural equipment which they should be stored properly after completion of jobs or tasks, and they should also be checked periodically, even if we are not using them for a longer time. If they should be stored according to the procedures which are provided within the operation manuals, the maximum recognized period between calibration checks is 12 months. For example, if you don't use your electronic equipment or the platform type of equipment for 12 months uh, in, a, in an activity, you should go and check for its proper calibration 
uh, every 12 months. However, this period may be also reduced by an airworthiness authority dependent on the condition of use. Of course, it, it, can, it can vary based on the direction which uh, you are provided by the responsible uh, authority. But at least for every two, for each equipment, we have to check for at least 12 months. After 12 months, periodic you want to check up as well like you want to know. Skills in the daily use may require a shorter interval and or daily, of course, daily minute can batch your equipment. We may require to check every six months or five months or even three months, we may. But those equipments which we don't use them periodically, uh, we should at least check them uh, within 12 months minimum. Scales should be returned to the manufacturer for proper calibration testing, of course. Uh, any scale, gauges, and other equipment which are used in the aviation maintenance environment, they should be returned to calibration uh, stations or calibration centers based on the requirements. So preparation for weighing. In general, weight, pro weight procedures may vary with the aircraft and type of weight equipment employed. The uh, procedure, the aircraft weight and balance, and the aircraft, or the little aircraft, of course, also based on the weight equipment we use equipment to but in general you procedures for every aircraft they are almost the same malat in chilanda nager gin kand aircraft or and aircraft gin milayu yetosenu negeroch linors lemichilu we have to follow the document the proper document for that specific aircraft malat so and uh, the first step action when we are preparing to make aircraft weight and balance. Our first step is to get or to make ready the proper document related to that particular type of aircraft weight and balance. Aircraft to get proper document magnet, it will be our first procedure. The weight procedure contained in the manufacturer's maintenance manual should be followed for each particular aircraft. Of course, uh, including not only this uh, document, which is related to it and balance, which is our topic for today. Yehulum uh, system, which the hydraulic system, I've discussed in the first semester, the landing gear control system, and so on. And under document, you have to get them within the aircraft. So the weight and balance procedure contained in the manufacturer's maintenance manual should be followed for each particular aircraft. The major consideration in preparing an aircraft for weighing are uh, described in the following slide. So the first step is we should prepare the scale. Which type of scale we are using, you should prepare it. So mechanical and electronic scales should be inspected prior to Use and set to zero zero like set it of course. Hey, now, yesterday I used to experience a lot of people like going to you. Man, yesterday you never know wrong man. This equipment should be set to zero. My jammer. Gauge, my kina gauge, let me say a speedometer or whatever. What is zero set in the middle? No, this scale should be also zero. Should be set to zero before we start our. Weight and balance procedures. This is done by adding and removing a weight, then rechecking for zero. So, this process should be repeated until steady zero is obtained. The scale should be located in the same environment in which they are to be used and allowed to come up to temperature at least two hours prior to use. So, what is zero scale? We are going to say somewhere uh, different. You know, temperature level. We have a different environment. Like on another level, we are going to say somewhere hot. You know, area like say on 
ሜጀርመንት ምን ሰራው ወይ ወይ ደሞ ዌትድ ባላን ምን ሰራው ኤሪያ ላይ ሆነ ነው መስራት ያለብን ማለት ነው ኦፍ ኮርስ አልሶ ዘ ቴምፕሬቸር ዲፈረንስ ዩዝድ አለው ቱ ካም አፕ ቱ ቴምፕሬቸር አትሊስት 2 አወርስ ፕራየር ቱ ዩዝ እስከ 2 ሰዓት የሚሆን ቀደም ብሎ መዘጋጀት አለበት ማለት ነው ስኬልስ ሹድ ኖት ቢ ዩዝድ ኢን ቴምፕሬቸር ኤክስትሪምስ ቢትዊን አይ ሚን ቢሎ 40 ዲግሪ ፋራናይት ኦር አባቭ 100 ዲግሪ ማለት ነው አንለስ ዘ ስኬልስ ስፔሲፊካሊ ዲዛይንድ ፎር ዩዝ ኢን ዘ ቴምፕሬቸርስ ሶ ከዚህ ቴምፕሬቸር ሬንጅ ቡጭ ሆነ እንደ አይነት ስኬሎች መጠቀሙ አይመከር ማለት ነው ቢኮዝ ኢት ዊል create some kind of error lifter bin selam michil ma'ana no electronic scales are very sensitive and if subject to freezing temperatures the liquid display may be damaged beyond use so the first step is to prepare your scale based on these procedures the second is uh, way clean aircraft inside hangar so the aircraft should weight and balance should be done also inside a hangar hangar line no masarat yalebet mikneyatu outside environment there is wind or other rain or whatever uh, conditions can create in or can cause an in an error to our weight and balance calculations so it is advised or it is recommended to work this weight and balance calculation of an aircraft inside hangar hangar line is sarai makara so the aircraft should be weight inside hangar where wind cannot blow over the aircraft surface and cause fluctuating or force scale readings the aircraft should be clean inside and outside with special attention paid to the pill pilot area to ensure that no water or debris is trapped the outside of the aircraft should be as free as possible of all mud and dirt yetelayu alas felagi uh which our agent which like mud na dirt same as all negros demo clean madaragal macho mara no the third one is the equipment list all the the required equipment must be properly installed and there should be no equipment installed that is not included in the equipment list there are list of equipments Uh, therefore those equipments which should be installed on the aircraft should be installed prior to making our weight and balance calculations also if there is another equipment which is not in the list of equipments for weight and balance it should not be included or should be avoided for us from the aircraft if such equipment is installed the weight and balance record must be corrected to indicate it of course if an equipment or some other weight is installed in the uh, aircraft this should be considered this should be taken into consideration and the weight and balance should be performed based on this additional weight ballast ballast is some um, kind of weight normally which is installed on aircraft to make the weight and balance of an aircraft uh, balance correct le madreg min tegemo weight additional weight no malen so all required permanent ballast must be properly secured in the in their proper place so all timber must be also removed temporary na permanent ballast min lachew negeroch allu malen no nezi ballastoch these permanent ballasts they are provided by the aircraft manufacturer of course but sometimes we can also put a temporary ballast to make our aircraft balance and weight uh, to the desired or the required uh, limit to the required limit like and we can add some additional weight so this should be removed whereas the permanent one should be place it on the proper position because the data or the cg range which will be provided by the manufacturer will be based on the permanent ballasts normally 
So these glasses are normally, they are heavy material, they are carried in to hold in the whole hold of an aircraft, especially one that has no cargo to give the aircraft increased stability and this is called ballast. So aircraft to balance the matter back, some kind of weight uh, can be added to the aircraft. For example, there is one aircraft which is known as, which is I know perfectly, which is known as MiG-21 uh, military aircrafts, which is one of the aircrafts which have been used by Ethiopian Air Force. There is some kind of blast or white end balance uh, optimization weight installed in the nose section of the aircraft. So this is permanent blast in the lower level. On the other hand, on some aircraft, we may also put a temporary blast to make our weight and balance to the desired uh, position. So this is uh, another important point or procedure uh, before we start our weight and balance procedures. Standard weights. Standard weights, there are also standard weights established. These are established weights for numerous items involved in weight and balance competitions. This weight should not be used if actual weights are available. For example, if the weight of this standard weight is given, we may not use them actually. But if we are not given, we have some data which is uh, in our flight manual or in the pilot's operator manual. We will get such type of uh, data. For example, this is aviation gasoline at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It will be uh, 6.14 gallon mono in terms of weight. Then, how much liter do we have inside the Aircraft fuel tank and also jets A, the mid type of fuel meter gallon. This has 6.7 gallon per liter, of course. And water density, this is density by the way, 8.3 and oil 7.5. So these are the standard weights which are used for data for the weight and balance calculation. Unless it's unless it otherwise they are specified we will use this data at this temperature and at this temperature because of, by nature as you know the temperature will have so fluids and this temperature uh, hence we use this temperature variation so based on the temperature variations the type of fluid to fuel for example water or air we use this data so some of the standard weights are listed in the following table, of course. So this weight should not be used if actual, in some cases, uh, the actual weight of each standard weight will be given. For example, this amount of water is available. This is, but if we are not given this specific weight for each standard weight, like oh, aviation fuels, water, oil, and so on, we use this table in order to make our weight and balance calculations. So note that the difference in weight as temperature change. So with temperature variation, of course, as you know, by nature, this fluid will vary. So although this change is a very small amount per gallon, of course, per gallon, this is very small, actually. It's, you may think uh, it's very small per gallon, per one gallon, but as you know, huge aircraft, especially those commercial aircraft, uh, majority of their weight will be taken by this fluidus, like fuel, for example, is a very significant part of the weight of an aircraft. So we should uh, not underestimate this 
variation of uh, weight because 6.14 for example for uh, per gallon but as you know very huge aircraft they have to carry huge amount of fuel on their fuel tanks and it could be the source of weight and balance disorders so although this change is very small in per gallon it could end up in a significant total weight gain when dealing with large quantities of fluids such as those found in the commercial aircraft for example so you should not underestimate this amount of fuel or fluids or in general they are standard weights the other is draining the fuel so one of the procedures which should be followed during preparation of weight and balance is you should drain or you should avoid the fuel with in the aircraft so drain fuel from the tanks in the manner specified of course there is a procedure how you can drain or how you can avoid the fuel from the aircraft based on the procedure you should drain it if there are no specific instructions drain the fuel until the fuel quantity gauges uh, reads empty when the aircraft is in level flight altitude level flight altitude means the aircraft should be level for us in a level and straight line attitude more a bit before you drain so you should drain and if you're remaining in the in the system is considered residual or unusable fuel and is part of the aircraft in weight so when you are referring to your uh, manuals you will get residual fuel and this will be considered as part of the mp weight of the aircraft the amount of the residual fuel and it's armor normally found in the note not one in the section of the type certificate data so this residual you will get in the type certificate data sheet uh, data pertaining all models of the aircraft based on the aircraft you will get so we have discussed about this type of certificate tcds so you will get this data also residual and it's armor also if it is not feasible to drain for example in some cases you may not be able to drain the fuel so you should follow another technique that is you should top off the fuel tank to its maximum level and then take the measurement based on this so and then the fuel will be able to drain matter give my child but condition be better you should feel Oh, fuel tank based on the standard data we are here given here the type of fuel for example if you get one then how much gallon is it times is this liter times its density you should put the weight which is caused due to this thing and then you should subtract it from the total weight so you can make this type of after weighing is complete the weight of the fuel and its moment are subtracted from those of the aircraft as weight so subtracted as the correct to correct the empty weight for the residual fuel add its weight and moment so residual you should add it the other is oils there are different type of oils which are used in the aircraft lubricating oils and engine oils and hydraulic oils and so on it tell you why not oils are aircraft system it tell you system uh, grease and so on and so on are within the aircraft systems therefore uh, one of the procedure is to consider this oils you should empty this oils also or you should avoid or you should drain this the input for 
aircraft certified under civil aviation regulations card this part does not include the engine lubricating oil. Based on the type of aircraft, of course, this may not include. So the oil must either be drained before the aircraft is weighed or its weight must be subtracted from the scale reading to determine the input weight. So to weigh an aircraft that does not include the engine lubricating oil as part of the weight, uh, the input weight, place it in level flight attitude, then open the drain valves and allow the oil to drain out. Any remaining is desirable oil and is part of the input weight. So you cannot avoid 100%. Some amount of may remain within the fuel lines, the fuel tank and other uh, system so this can be considered as part of the input weight of the aircraft and another aircraft which have been certified under this title 14 called federal aviation regulation include full full oil as part of the input weight some aircraft may also consider as part of the input weight so it's the documentation which you are using which gives you a direction how you can measure or you can Proceed your procedures on this way to end the balance. So, on some aircraft, the, you should defuel the oils or you should avoid the oils. On some aircrafts, you may also consider as part of the MP2 weights balance. So, seriously, you should follow the procedures. If it is impractical to drain oil, also, the reservoir can be filled similar to the one we have discussed for fuels to the desired level. Then specified level, and then the weight of the oil is computed at this pounds per gallon. But under this is seven pounds per gallon. When I pass that, you can subtract the weight which is added due to the presence of this oil. Then its weight and moment are subtracted from the weight and moment of the aircraft as weight. The amount and armor of the anti undrainable. Oil are found in not one of the type certificate classes, and this must be added to the MP2. Undrainable, of course, unavoidable, you again, it will be found in your type certificate data sheets. Other foods also are available. Hydraulics, fluids in the reservoirs, are other reservoirs containing fluids required for normal operation of the aircraft should be full. Leluch, of course, without uh, hydraulic fluid, normally you cannot perform uh, even ground operations. Yes, therefore, this hydraulic reservoir should be full according to the procedure. And all other reservoirs containing fluid required for normal operation of the aircraft, they should be full. So, fluids not considered to be part of the MP2 weight of the aircraft are potable or drinkable water, lavatory, pre-charge water, and water for injection into the engines. And these are not considered as part of uh, the MP2 weight. Whereas this hydraulic fluid is considered in most of the cases. Because this, without this hydraulic fluid, you cannot extract and, and retract your landing gear, for example, your control surface and so on. Therefore, this cannot be considered as part of, uh, I mean, this can be considered as part of the input weight. Whereas, some fluids like drinkable water, lavatory water, which is precharged water, and water for injection into the engines, and also other fluids, if they are available, they cannot be considered as part of the weight and balance, I mean the input weight. Configuration of the aircraft. So there should be some known configuration uh, or position of the aircraft for making weight and balance. So you should consult or you should refer your service manual regarding position of the landing gear, shock strut and other control surfaces for weighing. So during weighing, what type of position or configuration will the aircraft have? 
it may vary from one card to other, so you should consult your service manual. So the landing gear strut should be inserted or retracted and so on. The position of the control surface should be at this angle, a sum of 10 degrees, something like that. So you should check your manuals related to the position of the aircraft uh, when you perform this weight and balance. So when weighing, so let's see, uh, one of the procedures is the configuration, configuration of the aircraft. So you should consult the document or the service manual for the aircraft and especially for helicopter, you should focus on the main rotor and they must be in the correct position. The other is jacking the aircraft. So if you are using the second type of uh, equipment especially, so there is a procedure for jacking the aircraft. So the aircraft are weighed by rolling them onto the ramps in the load sails are embedded. So this eliminates the problems associated with jacking the aircraft. So which load sails are embedded? Caster load embed corner, I don't know. So jacking as well again this time. However, many aircraft are weighed also by jacking the aircraft up and then lowering them onto the scale slots. Clear by Marrak. Then we can put them, or we can, lo we can lower the jack. So this jacking is one important procedure when we are working the weight and balance of an aircraft. So which needs uh, special attention. So extra care must be used when raising an aircraft on jacks for weighing. If the aircraft has spring steel landing gear and it is jacked at the wheel, the landing gear will slide inward as the weight is taken off the tire and care must be taken to prevent the jack from tipping over. So you should be sure to follow the recommended or the recommendations of the aircraft manufacturer in detail anytime any aircraft is jacked also not only for jacking but for other procedures or for other ta tasks also you should follow the recommendations which are provided by the manufacturer of the aircraft anytime when you jack up or jack lower the aircraft or jack down the aircraft the other is the level the aircraft level the aircraft should be in its level position before we go for aircraft weight and balance so this attitude or the level and straight position information is found in your type certificate data sheet. So some aircraft require plumb line to drop from a specific location so that the pilot or I mean sorry the point of the weight or the bob hangs directly above the identifiable point. So others specify that a split level be placed across two level leveling legs often special screws on the outside of the fuselage. So other aircraft call for a split level to be placed on the upper door seal. So there are also equipment which are known as plumb line which are uh, commonly found on the carpenters also. Also a split level can be used to check the level or whether the aircraft is on its proper level position. You can use these are the two equipment. For example, this is the plumb line. In our equipment, the metagots, it will allow you to be able to use the metagots type of equipment. No? So, this is used to check the, whether the surface is level or not. Check the metagots, it will be better. 
also this one the spritz level similarly this is also used by the carpenters also so you can them you can use them according to the procedures which are found in your documents when you are making aircraft leveling in fact this is called leveling the procedure is called leveling normally you should leveling or making the aircraft level so you use different equipment as desired or as required so these are two equipment so safety consideration is also another so we have discussed uh, normally 10 i mean 11 procedures we should be considered when we are preparing to make our weight and balance in our aircraft. So these are the 10 procedures. Of course, there are 11 normally. So the other important thing when we are doing the weight and balance is the safety considerations. Special special precautions must be taken when raising an aircraft on jacks. So of course, uh, there are some precautions or safety measures which should be taken when we use uh, our aircraft on jacks also. All jacks have screw down collars, some use drop pins or friction blocks based on the type of jack normally. Some have down corals, some have drop pins or some friction locks based on the type of jack you should follow the procedures so deter so having said this this is a pre preparation of weight and balance before we make weight and balance but the ultimate goal of weight, any weight and balance is to get the center of gravity as we have discussed so this, those we have discussed before in the previous few slides are the procedures and the safety precautions which should be taken. But the ultimate goal of any weight and balance calculation is to determine the center of gravity of the aircraft. This one. So when the aircraft is in its level flight attitude, drop a plumb line from the datum and make a mark on the hangar floor below the tip of the bob. So these are the procedures how he can get the desired center of gravity of the aircraft. So you can mark by drawing a chalk or some other marking mechanism. Then draw lateral lines between the actual weight points or the minorities and make a mark along the limit of the line at the weighing point for the nose wheel or the tail wheel. This line and marks on the floor allow accurate measurements between the datum and the weighing point to determine their arms. Of course, as we have said in the previous discussions, one of the important uh, parameters which should be considered is, uh, which should be found or should be known is the arm, this thing, and the weight also. So determine the CD by adding the weights of course, we have this case also. We add the weights, then you add the moments, and you divide the total weight to the total moment, then you will find the center of gravity relative to the datum. Then divide the total moment by the total weight. And you will get the center of gravity relative to the datum line or to the reference. You will get so these are the procedures which we have seen in the previous. Well, that time we have discussed only for a lever, which is put some kind of weight, but this time we'll exactly or we'll directly calculate the weight, uh, I mean the center of gravity, to, uh, an aircraft. For example, this is an example which is given as an example of locating the center of gravity with respect to the datum. So as you can see, which is, which in this case is the firewall. Consider the tricycle landing gear airplane as detailed in table study. So we have given weighing points, for example, right side seat. 
left side seat, nose seat. There are three seats. Scale of reading, we have read this one. Read, read. There is tear weight. And there is also net weight, arm of each and moment. So the sum of the net weight, that, that, tear weight. So this will be the total weight, net weight, this one, this one, this one. So the moment will be the multiplication of the net weight times the R. And you find this one. So the center of gravity will be the CG will be, this will be equal to the moment divided by the weight. Total moment, of course. Over total weight, you are, then we will find this one is the center of gravity. So locating the CG of an airplane relative to the data. For example, this is where is the aircraft? Uh, suppose this is the aircraft, and we are given the datum here. The datum of this aircraft is this one, and we have measured here, and the data is recorded. Then here, from here also, data is recorded. Then we put here. From the scale we read this, this amount and tear weight, then finally we'll get this one. So when the airplane is on the scale with the parking brakes off, of course the brakes should be off by the way. There should there should not be brake placed on the chocks. Place chocks around the wheels to keep the airplane from rolling. Of course, brakes should be off. Instead of that, uh, there should be a chuck, I mean chocks or taco. Taco in another linear way to keep the airplane from rolling forward and rearward. Then subtract the weight of the chocks called tear weight. So the weight we call in the previous table this one. This is called tear weight, this one. This is the chuck weight or chock. Chalk weight, man. So if you use this one, subtract the weight of the chalks. Minus the tar weights or the chalk, chalk weight, you have to subtract because uh, it's uh, 830 can be found by subtracting 16 from 846. So this is subtracted. Therefore, this is the tear weight or the weight due to the introduction of this uh, chocks at the Madragation Magnet, here as you weight at Madragation Magnet, we subtract it and this will be found in your books or data books from the scale reading to determine the net weight at the weighing point. Then we multiply each weight by the arm, as we have discussed in the previous uh, theory of uh, lever. Then we multiply by the arm, then we add total moment to find, we add this uh, multiplied product to find the total moment, and then determine the total weight and total moment. Then the CG is determined by dividing the total moment to the total weight, as you can see here. So this is the center of gravity, total moment, divided by total weight. And the center of gravity for this particular aircraft is 32.8 inches behind the datum. Behind the datum means to the right of the datum, because this is positive. If this is positive, it is to the right. And if it is negative, it will be to the left. So for the airplane in the table has net weight of this amount of power and the CG is this amount. So this is the aircraft with the datum here. So you'll be given a datum is any vertical line. 
which passes through the aircraft, it can be somewhere arbitrary line normally in the nose, in the tail, anywhere. Then this is the datum located at the firewall. Of course, this is found, this datum is given to be at the firewall of the aircraft. And finally, you will get the center of gravity by using this formula. Center of gravity, total moment over total weight. So you will get this C is a CG. And also you will find the range within which this center of gravity can be tolerated. So you'll get the from your data, the range of the center of gravity, and then you will load your aircraft according to this uh, limit or to the center of gravity range or center of gravity limit. Then you will make ready your aircraft for flight or you will disp dispatch it because those personnel who are working here are called flight dispatchers or aircraft dispatchers. So another is input weight formulas. So input weight formulas, there are charts as we have seen this one, table three means this one. Charts like this one. Helps the pilots to, to visualize the weights, the arms, and the moments which are created by this weight. When the weight which makes it, you need to know moment, when I need weight which are the aircraft to like the pilot will be assisted by the data which will be provided by the personnel working on the ground, but. It is quicker to determine the MP2 CG by using formulas and an electronic calculator. So this chart is so all this data which are provided in hard copies to the pilots will help him what type of weight is installed or loaded on the aircraft and at what arm it is installed and what how much amount of moment this will create and how it will affect the controllability of the aircraft, visualizing the In fact, again, but there is some quicker mechanism where we can also determine the input weight center of gravity of the aircraft by using formulas and electronic calculators also. But so the use of calculator for solving this problem is described in chapter. Eight aircraft weight and balance handbook. This is our textbook normally. How to calculate the input weight using calculator. Input weight CD, uh, it will be discussed in chapter eight of our uh, textbook. Also, this topic use of computers in weight and balance competitions. We have the milk chapter and so we will see it in the next chapter eight. In, or also if you are interested in Harry to know this in urgency to know this uh, calculation, how to make calculations by using computers and calculators, you can go to your textbook and refer chapter eight or read. So in that chapter, there is a chapter eight, which is use of computers in weight and balance competition. But in this topic, we'll see empty weight calculations by using formulas. There are also formulas where we can find, through which we can find the center of gravity. So there are, as we have said earlier also, I said it several times, the ultimate goal is to get the center of gravity, by the way. Uh, the center of gravity of the aircraft based on the weights which are on the aircraft. So there are four possible cases in a, in any aircraft, when we use uh, this formula method to get the center of gravity, there are four, four points. We have four possible cases. The first case, is, uh, of course, uh, all these four cases are based on uh, the location of the datum. The first case, for example, the datum is forward of the airplane nose hill. 
the second is data after of the mean the main wheels the third one tail wheel landing gear and the fourth one is data after of the uh, that is the tail wheel landing gear tail wheel both of these one are the nose wheel type of aircraft and this type of the tail wheel aircraft of course this one we have discussed what type of aircraft we call nose wheel and what type of it we call tail wheel uh, we have discussed in the first course about uh, aircraft systems and structure nose wheel where majority of the aircraft is i mean majority of the aircraft is loaded on the nose wheel we call such type of aircraft majority load here nose wheel nose wheel yemen low aircraft channel one in some aircraft is also majority of the aircraft load is concentrated on the tail wheel such type of aircraft we call them tail wheel therefore we will see these four cases uh, to calculate the center of gravity uh, by using formulas so let's see the first case of course uh, by uh, completing these four cases we will wind up our today's discussion normally so the first is the datum forward of the airplane or this type of aircraft is of course it's a nose hole type of aircraft as you can see so the difference between the nose wheel and the manual is that majority of the aircraft is loaded the aircraft load is carried by this nose wheel so let's see so here we have the data is forward of forward of the airplane so here we have the data so to determine in general of course we will have uh, center of gravity to be is equal to plus or minus d plus or minus the force times l over the gross weight of the aircraft this will be in general the formula for all the aircraft uh, CG calculation based on the formula. So this, where, what are these parameters for D is the distance between the datum and the main wheel. Uh, no, no, the wheel, here is the wheel. D is the distance between the datum and this wheel, force. The, the datum of the airplane in figure seven is 100 inches forward of the leading edge of the root for let's see for, for, for let's see the formula for us anyway so this is the distance of the main wheel from the datum so t is this one l is the distance between the two wheels between the main wheel and the nose wheel f is the weight of the nose wheel F is the nose weight is the total weight of the airplane. This is the CG location. Therefore, F is the nose heel. Nose heel landing gear is in consideration. So here is the force F here. This is our F. So our calculation will be based on this data. So from this, relative to this, how, what will happen to this? Uh, so we are going to calculate based the CG based on this formula, plus or minus D minus, plus or minus of course, FL over weight. Then we will calculate for this case, we will calculate the CG is equal to to be, so this is the D, D is to the right of the data, and hence it is positive. So this is plus D or 
then this plus or minus, we don't know. So which one? This force. This force. This is this force. This force, it is also causing a moment which is counterclockwise. This force is creating a counterclockwise moment, hence it is negative. That is force times L, the distance between the two, divided by the weight. So for this case, the formula or the formula to find the CG of the aircraft is this one. D plus FL minus positive D minus FL over weight will be because the moment which is created by this force. So no wheel uh, landing gear real now. The force in consideration is the wheel on the nose wheel. That is the F is in this lying in this nose wheel. Uh, Lies larger uh, and here's uh, the, uh, the total weight of the airplane is found, of course. We find the CG formula of such type of configuration or in this type of case, when the datum is forward of the airplane, we will use this type of formula, this formula. So to determine the CG by using the formula below, you will get D minus F L over it and you will get this one. So the CG is 114.8 inch. And in, in, in general, for such type of configuration or position, when the datum is forward of the aircraft, you use this formula, I don't know, but you know, you will find this. So the CG is found to be by using this formula this much. So this is 13.8 inch forward of the main wheel, weighing pointers, which proves the location of the datum has no effect on the location of the CG if all measurements are taken from the same location, by the way. They should be taken from the same location. But the position of datum has nothing to do. We have discussed also. The second case is when the force in consideration is a nose wheel landing gear, of course. The force is the same uh, on the nose. F is here. The force is here. But this time the datum is after the um, main landing gear. The landing gear is better. No consider man. So of course, we can discuss the matter. The matter nose hill end, uh, tail wheel yami balu aircraft. We have classified based on the load. But in this case, when we talk nose wheel landing gear. We are considering the force is lying on the nose hill. Nose hill lie force. The force we are considering is lying on the nose hill. Malas Okay. So we are considering the forces. The force we are considering is uh, lying on this uh, nose hill. For, for this case, SK mocker roots based on this one. The CG will be yeah. Any other one? Yes, I'm much in I hope. T plus or minus F times L over weight. Yes, I'm all. Hello. Uh, so, uh, uh, then try this one. In your basic formula, this one. So based on this, we have uh, uh, 10 or we have found this formula for an aircraft where the datum is in front of the aircraft. So for this particular aircraft, then <coughs> the datum is uh, as a rear of the main wheel. So you can uh, do this CG is equal to, okay. So here is the force. So manual, can you tell me? CG is equal to what will be D. D is the distance uh, of this main, this force. This is D, the distance of the force. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is not. D is this, uh, the distance between the main wheel and the datum. Yes, this is D. 
T. So it is to the left of the data. D yet in yellow is plus or minus? It will be minus T because it is to the left of the data. So low number one. And now plus or minus no me. Okay, let's uh, uh, leave it. Uh, plus no is minus we don't know plus or minus no we don't know and then f l this force times this uh, distance between the two hills this one is l divided by weight no matter no then the moment which is created by this force by this f about this data, you know, consider Monarago, it will be counterclockwise. Counterclockwise type of uh, rotation or moment will create then it will be minus your element. Therefore, for this particular case, the CG will be for this particular case. The CG formula will be what? CG is equal to uh, minus T minus FL over total weight, or otherwise, CG will be negative T plus FL over weight. Of course, in the Zindemon, I hope. Uh, yeah. Yeah, lengths and lengths negative. Because it's it's you no, know, we are not considering relative to the datum. Adelum is to consider the area. Oh. Relative okay. to datum beyond neuro. Because you know, many of them are wrong. But to who will smile at the distance which I know we are certain. Before it's. Positive L. It's just a measurement, Marlon. So, relative to the data beyond gain is, of course, to the left, to negative narrow number. Then we are only taking the distance between the two wheels. Wherever position you have a data, line at the uh, it's positive measurement, because it's a distance between the two only gap. Uh, Therefore, it will be this one. Gilt no update. Ah, teacher, kadata mo ang saras biyon o hindi yolo to different doon alter doon to manap. Teka teka. Lelu cha chu gilt no tamaruich. If you have any question, hula tum formula drive argan al mara no. So the CG location, mi yata gab it set and data wish ba matagan. Uh, then we will find by uh, we will use this formula for this particular case anyway. If the data is at the back of the main wheel corner, uh, the main landing gear or main wheel corner, I don't know, the CG location will be then this one. It's negative. But I don't know, this means negative the CG location action, it is negative 88.2. No, if it's 88.2 minus this means. It is to the left of the datum we select. Man, datum can be written now. What the graph that can be on the mass iron man. Then this place is thirteen point eight forward of the main wheels. Exactly the same location as when it was measured from other datum locations. So, can you datum locations in calculate scenario? Um, kadam the same. No, I'm not aware. So, datum is any reference line, by the way, and it doesn't matter. Uh, the location of the datum doesn't matter. The CG location will be the same, you know, for some specific uh, particular type of loading yellow on the aircraft, whether we take forward of the node section or after of the node section or somewhere in the aircraft. There will no be variation on the center of gravity. As far as we take all the measurements from that particular datum, 
So location of data, the location of the data is not important in this time. It's not very important. But all the measurements must be made from the same location. For one particular calculation, can put up most again in our panel model. Of course, if I hope in the Zulu Tomb in Jaras, anyway, Scania low, you can read. It's enough normally for today. Let's are really back and chill. Tiyaki kalachu, text marek chillachu, badim suma take chillachu, scoun discuss karagnachu nagaroch. Le unit mefter, alama chin, alama kefto da dadi mona le bachu. Ye national airways et kubania, national aviation college. Tratna de rejon yet a becasiltana bemestat, bukuzega yafarano. Buffalight operation, bever ramestangudo, betiketing in a reservation, boat in a tourism wealth asseltan and toda da in other gutalan, college action, Canada Camigeno, International Air Transport Association, Ayatana, Kangalizu, ICM Gar Bemetababer, Alama Kafukana Losultana Yesate Genya. Buffalight operation, bever ramestangudo, Yaminsatacho Sultana, Ethiopia Civil Aviation Vara Sultan, Mulukinan. Adrasha, Kurgola Gul Tower, Hyoleta Dababai, Wadashola Bemus Domangerlai, Ye National Airways at Kubania, National Aviation College, Hilmon.